Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this DIY Dollar Tree half round decorative shelf. And we're going to use this big Americana faux wood sort of bunting <laughs> and a plunger. I know I rag pull a plunger out for DIYs. You guys are like, what are you going to do with the plunger? So you're going to need a plunger and a Jenga blocks. Now, if you have scrap wood around your house, you won't need the Jenga blocks, but this is what we're going to use because everything's from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to decorate it with this lace ribbon, um, but you can decorate it with other options and I'll show you. You're going to need some fix all adhesive as well as your hot glue gun. Um, your hot glue gun will be to put on the lace trim, but it'll also be to help the fix all adhesive stay up. Now I'm going to use my drill to pre-drill through things and um, screw in, but you guys, whatever. Now I'm going to use spray paint from Walmart and then my chalk paint, but those are options. And then of course I'm going to use this caulk that I found at the Dollar Tree. And that's completely optional as well. Okay. So this is my inspiration piece. I actually have this shelf on my wall in my guest room already. And when I saw this, the size of this half moon bunting, half moon. I don't know why I keep calling it that. This half round bunting. I said, I think we could make another shelf. Um, now the shelf that I have existing already sort of has like this cut work detail as um, the little decoration underneath the shelf. But we're going to use the plunger. And the plunger is just for decoration. It's just to mimic the look of this wall shelf. It's really just decorative. It's um, also going to help make it look fancier than it is, in my opinion. So um, we've done this before where we have taken um, these, basically it's a giant paper sticker on the different signs at the Dollar Tree that are made out of this chipboard. Um, and this one actually came off way easier than most. Um, when I finally got my fingers under it, it came up in big sections like that, as you can see. Um, and then if you have trouble with yours, you know, you just, what you do is you just lay on a wet towel or a wet napkin in this case and you just let the glue in the paper soak on um in you know soak through and then the glue really does release really cleanly um i wanted to tell you that i went to try to find a second one of these for a long time because i thought actually three would have been the perfect thickness for this shelf to really have some really strong stability but i could only find one but it still managed to hold a decorative picture frame as well as a jar candle and and then I also tested it with my um, wax melt warmer which is made out of ceramic so it did hold up those two items um, not at the same time I, I switched off I'll show you I switched off the candle with the wax melt warmer but it had the picture frame and that so I'm just using an old like club card or whatever you you know you, they have these if you can pick up some gift cards that have expired or you can get samples at different stores um, that's what I like to use to scrape under because it won't mar the chipboard if I used a razor or something sharp I risk the chance of marring the chipboard and then you want to set that aside to dry okay now I was so pleasantly surprised that um, I was able to just cut the plunger with a regular scissor um, so you don't need any special tools, tools for that. What we're going to do first is we're going to remove the sticker. And this actually did take a little bit more. It was actually, let me say this, it was harder to remove the sticker off the stem of the plunger than it was the big giant um, piece of paper off of the um, decorative wall piece. Um, anyway, if you have two of those decorative wall pieces, you don't have to peel the paper. You can just glue the paper to the paper side. So you don't have to worry. You could skip that step. But um, I probably would do it anyway just for my, you know, sense of the weird. I'm weird like that. But um, the I just measured basically from straight down the side of the pole. Um, and then I tried to find... Um, what was even because you want that to lay flat now once you find it I'm drawing it on with a white erasable uh, wet dry a wet erase chalk pen because I can wipe it off when I'm done and I did it so I could show it on camera but um, what I did was I eyeballed it but then I cut a little further from it and I wanted to test it on the wood to see it, that it actually lays flat on the table or what will be on the wall so once you have that cut flat then I want to put it up against the underside of the board, which is basically where we peeled the sticker will be the underside of the board. 
Um, and then I did was I put my ruler down and I measured to make it even left and right. And then I traced around the inside of the plunger and the outside of the plunger to make like that. Um, it's about a half inch wide piece of rubber. We're actually, you're doing that because you're actually going to put the glue there. Um, it's easier to glue it um, down and you have it placed, you know, you mark your placements and stuff. So then we're going to take four Jenga pieces. Um, I've laid some masking tape down, sticky side up, and basically what you do is you just lay down one edge, fold it over flat, and then you stretch it. And this is just one way to keep stuff that you're gluing together. I've used fix all adhesive with a dab of hot glue so that it could set up and this is the next day where it's 24 hours later. Um, sorry it's going so fast but it took it was about a two hour project that I really couldn't leave two hours worth of video so it's gone pretty pretty fast but you guys get the gist. You're basically making one long block. The reason we glue it we, we want it to sit flat on the table so it stays level but we don't want to have the chance of the glue dripping through the space and getting onto the table. That's why we glue it, um, we put down the masking tape first. Okay. So now with the plunger positioned in the middle, I've taken the two strips and what you need to do is with those two blocks is you need to line them up with the holes that are pre-existing in the semicircle. The holes that were originally there for it to hang on a string. And you want to make sure that the blocks go directly in the middle of the holes because that is how the shelf is going to attach um, to the blocks of wood. The blocks of wood are then going to go get then going to be attached to the wall. Okay. So now that I have that, I've taken a tongue depressor size popsicle stick, the fat one, and I've cut it in half long ways. And then I've trimmed a little thin strip off the top just so it's only as wide as the Jenga blocks. I've laid them underneath and I'm pre-drilling through the Jenga blocks, through the popsicle sticks. And I'm doing this because what we're going to do is we're going to hang the popsicle sticks on the wall and use that as a brace and to also help us hang it. Just a little bit easier way of hanging it. Okay, and then once that's all dry, this is all dried 24 hours, then we're going to take it out and put a coat of spray paint on it. Now the spray paint is just optional. It's going to save me um, using all of my um, chalk paint up. So I just put a quick coat of this 97 cent spray paint from Walmart down over it first. Kind of like a base coat. Okay. And then um, I went outside because it was too much inside. But it covers the rubber really well. So this is just the first coat. I'm going to paint it with white craft paint. But I wanted to put this acrylic spray paint coating on it and then I'm going to do something that's a little extra and if you want to do it you absolutely can but I'm going to caulk add some caulk to here to make it more finished looking okay first thing we got to do is we got to drill the holes through that were in the chipboard into the little pieces of wood and screw that in so basically, this is just added reinforcement. Screw and glue is always the best method. I couldn't find the right size screws that wouldn't uh, be too deep for the, the board. Um, I'm sorry, for the Jenga pieces. So what I did was I found the screws that were holding that, um, that hook to the cardboard <laughs> from the, um, the artwork project with the, we made the hooks and stuff. So, oh my gosh, I'm having such trouble talking today. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, but this caulk I showed you guys from my haul was from the Dollar Tree. It's a paintable uh, ceiling caulk. Not ceiling for your ceiling, but it seals things in. Um, and it's paintable, so that's what you want to use. If you do this step, um, what I've done is I've just made it look more finished. Um, I've added a chunk of like a lot of glue there and I'm trying to make the transition between the plunger and the leg a little bit more level like I'm trying to because it does like the rubber just stops parallel to the to the tabletop um, what I'm doing is I'm just basically like you would with spackle I'm just filling in the space a little bit and I've just used that same gift card situation just to make it a little bit spread easy but then I also went 
wherever the jangle blocks meet the table, wherever the plunger met the table, I'd caulk that as well. And if you've never caulked before, um, caulk like this is cleanable up with your with a wet finger. So what you do is you lay down a bead of caulk, you wet your finger, and then you basically rub off with Evans Extra and get that nice smooth line. So then here we are again, 24 hours later, when the caulk is dried. And this caulk does dry pretty quickly. However, I um, did put quite a bit on the stem. Um, so you want to make sure it dries completely. And you can sand if you feel like it's not smooth enough for you. But since I was covering with chalk paint, I wasn't really worried about it. So here I'm just showing you different options from the Dollar Tree to edge it. You don't have to edge it, especially if you have a couple of layers thick, but I just wanted to add this lace to give it more of a farmhouse country feel, kind of like the style of my home. Um, and I've just showed you some options. That blue lace was sort of like a felt foam, like a felt foam lace that came out of the Dollar Tree in the springtime. You can use diamond wrap in one, two, or even three or four layers thick if you like a bling farmhouse which is definitely an option but what I'm doing is I'm using this lace now <laughs> I could swear up and down that I had about nine rolls of this but turns out I don't have any what I did have was a bunch of scraps left over from when we did the Valentine's Day banner um, and what I ended up doing was piecing them all together so that's what is happening here I'm piecing together the the lace trim but what I've decided to do was to add a ruffle to it. Okay, so basically I'm gluing down about one and a half inches and then I'm folding it back over upon itself about a quarter to a half of an inch and then bringing it back over and continuing that one inch gluing. And I'm doing that repeatedly and that's how I'm getting my ruffle. So basically I'm making sure that there's an inch and a half between the last ruffle and the where I'm going to start the new ruffle and then back tracing it about a half quarter inch to a half an inch and gluing it down. Um, I just thought that this not only added some made it look like the shelf had a little bit more thickness than it actually does but I really wanted to add this to make it um, more of a country style the way I like it. I also was thinking some of that um, the burlap with the lace down the middle would be cute. Like anything really you wanted to edge it with would be adorable. Um, and then you're just going to go all the way. Isn't that funny? Because before I was like rushing, rushing, rushing. Now it's like, ah, lace. It's just that the lace took a little bit more time. <laughs> now, if you did have the three, managed to get three of the banners and you were able to make this three banners thick, then you don't have to edge it um, but I would caulk the edge so that it looked smooth because when you glue the three panels together I'm sure they do leave the little indentations where each one is and just use your your gift card thing to use it like a spackle knife and to flatten it out um, also nautical rope I think that this would look awesome as a nautical table um, a nautical rope would be great now if you saw on the sample table the the pole that holds basically that goes down to the wall is basically was lathed and it's got like shapes and stuff in it so I was kind of thinking like oh I could take caulk and I can create um, some bumps and some loops and basically give shape to the um, to the plunger stick but then I thought that that was a little bit more advanced than I wanted to share with you guys so um, if you have advanced cake decorating techniques <laughs> and you're you're proficient with caulking I'd love to see what you do and if your husband has a lathe have him throw that pole on there and see what it looks like I'd love to see how it all comes out for you guys but I actually I do like its simplicity when I'm done when it's all done and it's hanging on my on the wall in the guest room I really do like it um so I to, I'll tell you we um put this sample up in place of where the original one was but that was not my intention with making it my intention with making it is to put it by the guest room um, side table uh, so people could put their phone charger on it um, basically is what it was so you'll see it you know my next guest room tour I'm sure that this shelf will be up in there and you see the space between the plunger and the jangle blocks that all gets hidden um, first of all, you have to be sitting down 
pretty low to see underneath the table the whole way. Um, but even um, just that little bit of lace that we're adding does make that um, very, very top of where the plunger hits the table disappear. So it just does look very decorative. It just looks like a decorative flange underneath the table as well as the pole going down the wall. Now when I bought the tables that were the samples for this or were the inspiration pieces for this, they were called colonial tables. I don't know if that has anything to do with their style or whatever. So now what we're doing is we're going to pre-drill through the popsicle sticks and the Jenga blocks. And the reason we want to do this is is twofold. One, we want to make sure that they don't split when they go on the wall. And the second thing is it'll hold the screws in. Um, so while we put them up on the wall, um, it'll be easier. We, we basically won't need that third hand. So what my handsome assistant is doing, and um, he's taken that washable white chalk marker and he's put the table on the wall and marked and with with the level and marked the straight line on the top and then the straight line underneath and then he put um, vertical lines where the screw holes were because he wanted to make sure he lined up the popsicle sticks where the the screw holes in the popsicle sticks with the screw holes of where they're going to be inside the wall okay does that make sense you guys getting that and then I've pre-drilled a center hole in the popsicle sticks so that he can screw the popsicle sticks into the wall with one center screw. Okay, and you wanna make sure that this is, uh, this hole is wider than the screw because you want the screw to go straight through it. Um, normally when you pre-drill in something, you don't want it to, the, the threads to be as wide as the hole because then it won't grip. But this is something different. We're pre-drilling through this into the wall. We wanna make sure it grabs into the wall but doesn't split the popsicle stick. And now we've pre-started all of the screws in their holes. And now it's much easier. When you have the screw come through the Jenga block a little bit, you can feel it grip into the hole where it belongs. And what's important to do is to, grew, to screw in one side, one screw from one side, and then screw in one screw from the other side to make sure it's balanced and even. Okay? Now I'm just taking a wipe and I'm wiping off all of that washable chalk marker, but you guys won't probably use the washable chalk marker. I just did that to show you, okay? And here it is. I've placed, like I said, a small art picture frame on one side, and this is my oil warmer that's made out of ceramics, and it is holding up really well. Um, I really do like the way it came out. I'm so glad I decided to make this. I hope you guys can find the supplies to make it as well. And um, here it is with the, this is a jar candle with a ceramic lid. And again, holds really strong with this as well. I wouldn't put both heavy pieces on it because it is a lightweight shelf, but that's it. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Share with friends or family. Anybody you know might be interested in learning how to make one. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. When you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know, know whenever I upload a new video. And if you make it, share with me on social media. I'd love to see how yours comes out. And as always, take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.